My uh, first day in the music business basically was uh, going to San Francisco to work for The Doors as a roadie, and I had zero skill set, never picked up an amp, plugged in a guitar, or done anything to that date. And that was kind of the beginning of a very different life. I was in college at the time planning on being a sociologist, so I became a micro-sociologist, trying to manage a very small group of people. And um, kind of from day one, I realized I was dealing with someone in particular who was very different than anybody else I'd ever met in my life. And uh, Jim had a number of issues that were made life really unpredictable and out of control for me, but ultimately he was just a, a person that wanted to push the limits of whatever it was. You know, if he was sitting here with you, he'd find a way to get you pissed off because it makes you real. And then he'd just laugh because that was kind of his joy to be a provocateur. But when you combined it with uh, alcohol or drugs, he did more than any other human being did. I mean, at one point, very early on, he, I, somebody in the band told me that Jim had taken 10,000 mics of acid. Well, a normal dose was 150. I remember. And um, there were a couple of other, I mean, at another point, a couple of, maybe a year, a year and a half later, he bought an ounce of cocaine, did it in a week. When he did something, he did it to the absolute extreme. So it created a situation that I had to learn how to be supportive and yet not a complete enabler. In Jim's case, he was really just a classic alcoholic, but because he was so out of the ordinary in so many ways, everybody ascribed their own values, their own perception on him. And I think that was part of his role in life as an artist, is to make us all reach deeper inside of ourselves and try to figure it out.